For today's discussion, I am going to discuss to you about your neurogenic shock. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos every single week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch when it was uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help me know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, let's jump into the video, nurses. Ayan nga, nurses, nagbabalik na naman tayo. Gusto ko magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga bago nating subscribers. Kumusta kayo? Kumusta kayo? Ngayon, pasensya na po at hindi ako masyado nakakapag-upload. Hindi ka alam nyo naman, medyo busy. Pero, I am back on track. And for today's discussion, I am going to discuss to you about your neurogenic shock. This is another concept natin sa ating medical surgical nursing kung saan binibigyan kita ng mga lecture materials na pwede mong gamitin sa pag-aaral mo ng medical surgical nursing. And on this video, we are going to have, you know, a definition as usual, assessment and diagnostic, nursing care management, medical management, and pharmacological treatment ng iyong neurogenic shock. All of that good stuff in one video. In order for me to do that, I will need to switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi everyone, welcome sa ating formal discussion ng iyong neurogenic shock. This is going to be your nursing care management discussion or lecture natin under pa rin sa ating medical surgical nursing. Yes, kung hindi mo pa nga napapanood yung other natin lectures na ginawa ko under sa medical surgical nursing, um, ililink ko yung actual playlist dyan sa description box or kapag nakita mo nagpapout yung icon button, simply click that one kasi ililink ko siya kasama ng iba pa nating playlist sa nursing education. Now, simulan na natin to. Ano-ano ba yung mga dapat yung masahan sa ating lecture for today? Well, we're gonna discuss or we're gonna define the, what is neurogenic shock, the causes, the clinical manifestations, assessment and diagnostic findings, medical management, ano daw, bisaya ka yung medical management and nursing management. Handa ka na ba? Let's begin. So, let's answer the question. What is neurogenic shock, nurses? Okay, let's define this one. Neurogenic shock is distributive type of shock. I want you to remember that. In neurogenic shock, vasodilation occurs as a result of a loss of balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic stimulation. It is a type of shock or life-threatening medical condition in which there is insufficient blood flow throughout the body. This caused by the sudden loss of signals from the sympathetic nervous system and maintain the normal muscles, uh, muscle tone in the blood vessel walls. Again, this is how are you going to define your neurogenic shock. Ano yung gusto kong tandaan mo dito? Like kapag, when you talk about neurogenic shock, tandaan mo lagi na involved dito ang para and sympathetic stimulation. And when you say shock, this is a life-threatening medical condition na involved ng insufficient or tag nating and compromise blood flow throughout the body. Oh, no. na sa mga susunod pa nating slides? Eto na. Alright, causes. So, what is the cause of your neurogenic shock? Well, iisa-isahin natin to. Now, spinal cord injury or SCI is recognized to cause hypotension and bradycardia o yung ating neurogenic shock. Spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia, injection of an anesthetic into the space surrounding the spinal cord or severance of the spinal cord results in a fall of blood pressure because of dilation of the blood vessels in the lower portion of the body and resultant um sorry and a resultant demulation a demulation a venous return to the heart and daan mo lang lagi na ang yung neurogenic shock you're talking about your vessel dilation the present action of medications the present action of medications and lack of glucose could also cause neurogenic shock Bakit depressant, oh, no. diba? Ano yun? Ano yun ni-stimulate niya para sympathetic effect? Everything goes down except for GI and GU. When you talk about parasympathetic, vasodilate, vasoconstrict, vasodilate. Okay? So once again, these are the causes of your neurogenic shock. Proceed na tayo. Clinical manifestation po. Paano nga ba? Ano nga ba ang mga signs and symptoms nito? Ito na tayo, nurses. 
una dry warm skin instead of cool moist skin the patient experiences dry warm skin due to vasodilation and inability to vasoconstrict hypotension hypotension occurs due to sudden massive dilation ano pa bradycardia instead of getting tachycardic the patient experiences bradycardia anong normal value mo para masabi mong bradycardic ang yung pasyente tandaan mo lang lagi ng normal value ng yung pulse rate is um, 60 to 100 below 60 that is considered brady okay now diaphragmatic breathing if the injury is below the fifth cervical vertebrae the patient will exhibit diaphragmatic or yeah diaphragmatic breathing due to loss of nervous control of the intercostal muscles now this is required for thoracic breathing diba alam mo naman yon now respiratory arrest one of the clinical manifestations of your neurogenic shock nga ay yung respiratory arrest Actually, this is the latent or ano na to, pinaka-huling sign na ito. Oh, no. Ayaw mo dumating ang pasyente mo sa ganitong point. Now, if the injury is above the third cervical vertebrae, the patient will go into respiratory arrest immediately following the injury due to loss of nervous control of the diaphragm. Once again, these are the clinical manifestations of your neurogenic shock. Now, let's proceed. Assessment and diagnostic findings. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga dapat mong gawin o dapat mong tandaan when you talk about assessment and how are you going to diagnose um, neurogenic shock. Ito na po siya. Now, diagnosis of neurogenic shock is possible through the following tests. Una, CT scan, computerized tomography. Now, anong, ga anong dapat mong uh, makita dito sa CT scan? A CT scan may provide a better look at abnormalities seen on an X-ray. Ano pa? Siyempre, X-rays. Medical personnel typically order these tests on people who are suspected of having a spinal cord injury after trauma. Magnetic resonance or yung MRI. MRI uses a strong magnetic field and radio waves to produce computer-generated images. Once again, visualization po ang dapat mong makita um, ang, ang ginagawa natin to, to identify the cause of your neurogenic shock. Tandaan mo na ang pwede maging causes nun is trauma sa yung spinal cord. Mostly trauma po talaga Siya. So, para malaman mo kung alin yung parte ng katawan ng pasyente mo na merong, tawag dito may sira o may abnormalities, kailangan mo ng imaging such as these three. Okay? Now, let's proceed. How are you going to manage your neurogenic shock? Ito na siya, nurses. Well, the treatment of neurogenic shock involves the following. Restoring sympathetic tone. It would be either through the stabilization of a spinal cord injury or in the instance of spinal anesthesia by positioning the patient appropriately. Yes, immobilization nga po. Diyan napapasok ang ating immobilization. Immobilization, I'm sorry. If the patient has a suspected case of spinal cord injury, a traction may be needed to stabilize the spine to bring it to proper alignment. Ano pa? IV fluids. Administration of IV fluids is done to stabilize the patient's blood pressure. Okay? Now, Proceed na tayo sa ating, parte pa rin ng ating medical management extended version. And not really extended, but hindi naman mawawala lagi ang pharmacologic therapy. Now, drugs administered to patient undergoing neurogenic shock are inotropic agents. Again, inotropic agents. Now, what are these medications? Una na dyan ang yung dopamine, which may be infused for fluid resuscitation. Alright? Ngayon, mas tatalakay natin sila isa-isa. Now, we have your atropine. Now, atropine is given intravenously to manage severe bradycardia. Naalala mo si atde, parte to eh. Sa ACLS, BLS mo, parte tong atropine. Saan sa management to? Sa unstable brady. Getching, getching. Actually, gumawa ko ng video no. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood, panoorin mo siya. Now, steroids. Patients with obvious neurological deficit can be given IV steroids such as methylprednisolone in high dose within 8 hours of commencement of neurogenic shock. Heparin. Administration of heparin or low molecular weight heparin as prescribed may prevent thrombus formation. Ano yung thrombus? Blood clot. Okay? O, proceed na tayo. Nursing management na nga po ito sa mga susunod 
susunod na slides, tatalakay natin. How are you, what is your role as a nurse in terms of your nursing assessment and nursing intervention? Okay, nursing assessment. Ano na yung mga dapat mong assess? Very important to because this is going, this is going to be your baseline, um, baseline data and will be your basis for your nursing intervention. So unahin natin to. Una, you have your ABC assessment. The pre-hospital provider should follow the basic airway, breathing, circulation approach to the trauma patient while protecting the spine from any extra movement. Naalala mo si ABC assessment mo, airway, breathing, circulation. I'm not really quite sure if I've done like a thorough discussion about your ABC assessment. Let me know sa comment section sa baba kung gusto mong gumawa tayo ng lecture regarding doon. But I w I'll be more than happy to do that for you because I feel like I can you know, share to you my knowledge about how are you going to make your life easier in remembering the concept uh, or doing your ABC assessment. All right, dito na tayo, neurologic assessment. Under dito, ano yung, ano yung dapat mong tandaan? Now, when patient is having neurologic deficits and a general level at which abnormalities began should be identified. Pwede mo dito um, parte dito yung pag GCS scoring, alam mo yung AVPU, yun, pwede mo rin siyang gamitin dito. Once again, these are your nursing assessment. Proceed na tayo sa ating, ano na to, nursing intervention. Okay, now nursing interventions are directed towards supporting cardiovascular and neurologic function until the usual transient episode of neurogenic shock resolves. Ano yung una mong dapat gawin? Pwede mong gawin to. Elevate head of the bed positioning. Elevation of the head helps prevent the spread of anesthetic agent up the spinal cord when a patient receives spinal or epidural anesthesia. Ina-advise na para hindi umakit ang anesthesia, hindi pa um, ma-prevent yung pagtaas ng anesthesia, papunta sa spinal cord, elevate the head of the bed if it's not contraindicated. Ano pa? Lower extremity interventions, applying anti-embolism stockings and elevating the foot of the bed may help minimize pulling of the blood into um in the legs and prevent thrombus formation. Next, exercise passive range of motion. Yes, exercise, but you need to take note of this. Passive, R-O-M nga po. Immobilize extremities helps promote circulation. Ano pa? Checking airway patency. Maintain airway patency. Keep head in neutral position. Elevate head of bed slightly if tolerated. Use airway adjuncts as indicated. Ano yung mga airway adjuncts mo? Meron ka dyang OPA, meron kang LMA, meron ka rin dyang, ano pa ba? Ayan, yeah, OPA. Oxygen administration. Ano na yung mga dapat mong, oh, pwede mong gamitin dito. You can use nasal prongs, mask, intubation, and ventilator. Activities. Plan activities to provide uninterrupted rest periods and encourage involvement within individual tolerance and ability. Next, isa sa mga dapat hindi mong ma-miss ang BP monitoring. Bakit? Kasi nga, it can cause, remember, neurogenic shock is the deficit blood flow. Oh, no! Meaning, hypotension nga po ang kalaban mo dito. Measure and monitor BP before and after activity in acute phases or until stable. Lastly, reduce anxiety. Assist patient to recognize and compensate for alterations in sensations. Once again, these are your nursing interventions. Aww. Nurses, ang bilis lang. Tapos na nga po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. At sana nga po ay nakatulong ito sa pagre-review mo ng iyong medical surgical nursing, specifically sa neurogenic shock. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do or you want me to create for you. I'll be more than happy to do that on my next uh, videos. So, I hope you guys have a good one and kung hindi ka pa subscribe, please please subscribe now and hit that notif bell para lagi kang inform every time na mag upload ako ng mga content ko. Help me out, spread the news about my channel. No. Kasi nga, itong pinakabago, pinaka masaya, sorry, hindi pa ako nagla-lunch, at pinaka pinaka libreng reviews, nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. I'll see you again next time. You have a good one. Thank you so much nurses for watching. I hope you learned something. Help me grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team cool Talk. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you 
I'll be putting the links on the description box. You simply click this icon button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. Also, I would just like to grab this opportunity to please like, share, and follow Kanasa Akin Facebook page. It's Neil Galbe. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you again, nurses.